Hi guys, welcome back to another video for your channel. So today we will be discussing about gastric dilatation and volvulus in canines. So we are all familiar in the affections of stomach in small animal. Gastric dilatation and volvulus. So this is a very serious emergency ill condition in canines which must be dealt with utter seriousness. So subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon for more updates. So introduction, gastric dilatation and volvulus syndrome, GDV, or known as blot in dogs, occurs in the dogs when the stomach dilates, that is gastric dilatation, and twists into an abnormal position, that is volvulus, causing non-productive retching, that is retching is the action of vomiting and non-productive, that means nothing comes out, and a blotted abdomen, that is due to the air present in it, and other symptoms that is secondary to the stomach dilatation and twisting. So GDV is a serious life threatening condition that requires emergency treatment. So incidents who all or when will this hate on to the dogs? So large breeds deep chested dogs are most frequently affected by the GDV and mostly dogs with uh, GDV that is mainly mature dogs or middle aged or older dogs. So males are affected more than females in the ratio of 2 is to 1 because of the higher hyperactivity of the males. So etiology, there is no definite known cause of GDV, that is no bacterial, it's completely a metabolic or, or like physical problem. So eating a single or a large meal daily, drinking large amounts of water immediately after eating, exercising very vigorously on a full stomach or gulping down the food very quickly or it may be caused by the genetic factors due to the weaker ligaments of the stomach which is held in the stomach. So the pathophysiology, once the food is in the stomach, it started getting digested, it will be producing HCL and the food components will be breaked up. So dilated stomach leads to compression of the duodenum that prevents the passage of gas in the small bowels. So stomach dilates and the splenic vessels come to lie ventrally across the esophagus. So when become partially obstructed, that will lead to venous congestion and followed by splenomegaly. So rotation of the spleen can also happen in case of this thing and the development of gastric necrosis and splenic necrosis can also happen. The dilating stomach exerts pressure upon the caudal vena cava and it gets occluded and promotes the severity of the shock or it starts to the the hypovolemic shock. As intragastric pressure increases due to the presence of gas inside the stomach, it can create ischemic hypoxia of the gastric wall that will lead to gastric necrosis. The distended stomach also puts pressure on the diaphragm. So, soon after the diaphragm, we can see the stomach. So, whenever the stomach is containing a lot of gas, it will get dilated and this will impart some pressure on the diaphragm. That will lead to the pressure on the lungs and that will lead to respiratory difficulty, dyspnea, apnea, etc. So, continued gastric distension lead to decreased venous return because this uh, gastric dilated stomach is starting to compress the vena cava and the peripheral circulation will be lost and the venous return will be very less that lead to cardiac output problems or decreased cardiac output. Portal venous occlusion may initiate septic shock and that is caused by hypovolemia or failure of the reticular endothelial system capacity to neutralize the endotoxins which is produced by the pancreas and released by the pancreas and the spleen. So this is actually the condition you can see this is the esophagus and this is the pylorus region. So normally positioned stomach will be like this as the stomach distends and rotates the esophagus twists and the pylorus begins to point upwards you can see this thing. And see the pylorus, the stomach twist and the pylorus moves to the opposite side and you can see completely it gets uh, as a C-shaped appearance. Over the time this caused stomach cause discoloration or discoloration and reversible damage. That is actually the vessels will be uh, occluded and this will lead to ischemic gastric necrosis. So you can see a papal appearance or C-shape appearance etc. It's correct C-shape. You can see, you can well, very well appreciate the C-shape. You can see the C-shape. This is the C-shape. So this will be the esophagus and uh, this is these are the ligaments which is holding the stomach. So this is normal stomach and this is GDB stomach. 
so you can see how this is revolving so healthy dog when it gets blotted blotted and twisted and that will lead to external abdomen so these are the pictorial representation of the pathogenesis of the gastric dilatation valves So this is the distended abdomen. This is a characteristic T shape appearance. So clinical signs. So whenever the animal will be taken to the hospital, it will be showing some clinical signs, mainly restlessness or anxious anxiousness, abdominal discomfort, retching or dry heaps, distended abdomen, groaning, rapid or difficult breathing, excess salivation, depression, and lethargy. So later symptoms will be like cool extremities. That is actually due to the absence of peripheral circulation. Pale mucous membrane and prolonged CR that is uh, capillary refill time will be lost. It will be greater than 2 seconds because of uh, entire blood will be pulled into the general circulation and no blood will be there in the peripheral circulation. Arrhythmia due to the problems of decreased cardiac output, low pressure, low blood pressure due to the low venous return. Death is actually due to hypovolemic shock and endotoxemic shock. You can see unproductive retching, excess salivation, distant abdomen due to the gastric dilatation and lethargy. Diagnosis is completely a tentative diagnosis that is based on history, clinical signs, feeding habits and palpation techniques and also the experience of the clinician. So you can go for complete blood count because uh, there will be toxins, there will be excess neutrophilia and all. You can see whether there is release of endotoxins and all. So radiography, uh, GDV is diagnosed with abdominal radiograph showing distended abdomen that has shelf or C-shaped appearance. Ultrasonography and ECG, you can go for heart problems and all. We can, whether we can see how this GDV has affected the heart. So, treatment. Uh, GDV is a me medical emergency actually. And treatment should begin as soon as possible. So, sooner the dog is treated, the greater is chance of survival. So, you can go for antibiotics to collect, uh, correct the gastrointestinal infections. Antihistamines to control gastritis and peptic ulcer due to HCL. Corticosteroids to control the inflammation. Medical decompression techniques can be used uh, by you passing a pipe. Uh, which can uh, actually uh, impose the gas and which will decrease the amount of gas present in the stomach. Sometimes it cannot be done because if the stomach is twisted, it will be difficult to pass the tube through the esophagus into the stomach. Uh, in that time, the dog will be needing surgery. So, surgical technique is actually uh, suturing the stomach to the body wall, usually a part of ribcage or so it cannot twist again. That is belt loop gastropexy or anchoring surgery. So, we will be anchoring the stomach into the abdominal wall so that it won't be revolving again. So this is actually the gastropexy belt loop. So this is actually the loop and this is the belt. You can see actually how it is like the human belts. Surgical tacking or belting. This is belt loop gastropexy. So complications, GDV surgery is not always successful and it can lead to arrhythmia, belching and death because of the other problems of uh, venous congestion and all. So disseminated intravascular coagulation, intermittent vomiting, postoperative gastric ulcerations, recurrence of gastric dilatation. These are all the complications. So prognosis depends upon how after surgery we are uh, seeing upon the dog and how well we are maintaining the dog's walking posture, eating habits and all. So dogs that require removal of the part of stomach that is partial gastrectomy uh, will have decreased chance of survival because of the ischemic gastric necrosis and all. Dogs that recover well after 7 days will have a very good chance of survival. Recurrence are common actually, especially in dogs that do not undergo gastropexis. So, thank you.